The Arona is Seat's idea of a small sporty SUV, and it's likely to continue to find favour with the increasing number of buyers who would once have simply bought another Super Mini, but now feel the need to get themselves something more interesting and lifestyle orientated. It's good looking, safe, well connected, and very personalisable, especially in this usefully improved form. If this is the kind of car that appeals to you, then an Arona may well tick a lot of boxes. Seat's conquest of the SUV segment continued with this Arona. It launched back in 2017 to slot into the Spanish makers lineup just below the successful Attica model, which is based on the running gear of the company's Leon family hatch. The Arona, in contrast, is a super mini base crossover, so shares its oily bits with the Barcelona Mark's Ibiza Super Mini. This car was developed as part of the 900 million euro investment set aside to create the fifth generation Ibiza. It targets a compact crossover segment which has increased fourfold in size since 2015 and claims to bring to the sector the sports DNA dynamism that Seat hopes characterises its brand. Here's the lightly revised version launched in mid-2021. You wouldn't have thought that Seat could go too far wrong here. With its only slightly larger Attica SUV, the brand has already shown it can produce a compact crossover with class-leading standards of ride and handling. Replicating that showing in the smaller form of this Arona ought not, you might think, to have been too difficult, particularly when they had such a strong set of fundamentals to work with, primarily the stiff, sophisticated MQB A0 platform first used by the company with the fifth generation Ibiza Super Mini model this car is entirely based upon. Sure enough, drivers setting off down the road in an Arona who happen to be familiar with rivals to it in the small SUV segment may well notice that the steering's more direct, the corner turn-in's more precise and that body roll is rather better controlled. The ride's pretty good too, though certainly on the firm side, especially when saddled with the stiffer sports suspension you have to have with this particular car's more dynamic FR trim. A spec level Seat reckons many Arona folk will want. If you don't like the feel of road ridges or tarmac tears, you might prefer one of the other variants that handle them better. As expected, the Arona shares the engine lineup used in Seat's Ibiza Super Mini, which means that all of the power plants on offer have direct injection and a turbo. There are various different petrol units to choose from, the headline emphasis being on the usual Volkswagen Group three-cylinder, one-litre TSI petrol unit, available in 95 PS form with a five-speed manual gearbox, or in 110 PS guys with dual-clutch, seven-speed DSG auto transmission, or, as in this case, a six-speed box. The final petrol choice is a 1.5-litre four-cylinder, 150 PS Eco TSI unit with active cylinder deactivation technology, which is exclusive to the FR trims and is connected to DSG auto transmission. Go for the sporty FR trims and you get this Seat Drive profile that allows you to alter the steering, throttle response and suspension feel via four modes. Normal, sport, eco and individual. There are now no diesel options. This Seat feels right at home in town with its great all-round sight lines and tight 10.6 metre wall-to-wall turning circle. The light steering that some might think could do with a touch more feel at speed through the corners is of course perfect for the urban jungle. Predictably, that's the only kind of jungle you'll be traversing in this car. It does of course only come in front-driven form. A 15mm increase in ride height over an Ibiza will obviously help a little if you do find yourself on an unmade track, but basically there's not the slightest hint of off-road potential here, with all variants resolutely front-driven and no plans from the Spanish brand to offer the kind of grip control traction system you'll find on some similarly configured rivals. Ultimately, for all its crossover cues, rough road readiness simply isn't in the Arona's DNA. Why would it be when this type of terrain will be so foreign to likely customers? 
What matters is the fact that it's difficult to better in this class when it comes to tarmac territory. In that respect, at least, it's a Seat through and through. The changes to this updated Arona are subtle, but you might well notice the new LED headlights, the restyled bumper, and the smarter, hot-stamped front grille design. At the rear, there's a new spoiler and diffuser, and the Arona badge now gets a handwritten font. As before, this car sits on the same NQB A0 platform as its Ibiza Super Mini stablemate. And, like its rivals in the segment for small SUVs, this car's trying to give the feel of being a sturdy car for everyday life in the urban jungle. Hence the strong protection in the bumpers, the wheel arches and the dark coloured rubber side skirts, as well as the roof rack and the uh, aluminium lookalike protection at the bottom of the bumpers. In terms of its dimensions, the Arona remains compact, 4,138 millimetres long, which is 79 millimetres more than an Ibiza. However, the real difference lies in its height, as the Arona is 99 millimetres taller. As a result, this SUV offers not only higher ground clearance for any off-road adventures, but also more interior space. Let's take a look. And inside, well, if you like the funky attitude of the exterior, you might be a little disappointed to find that little of it has been carried over into the cabin, which is virtually identical to the rather conservative interior you get in an Ibiza, though you do sit a little higher. What's not up for debate is the quality of what's provided here, something usefully improved with this updated model. Gone is the bland angular dashboard we disliked in the original version. In its place is a completely redesigned and much nicer fascia with softer touch surfaces and more interesting textures. And there's more. The leather covered steering wheel has been redesigned. So have the air vents, which now in a trendy touch light up at night in trim dependent colours. Possibly the very first thing you'll notice, though, is the all-new central infotainment screen, which is about 20% bigger than before and offered in either 8.25-inch or, as here, 9.2-inch sizes. This screen's much cleverer, too, with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, smartphone mirroring functionality, online connectivity with an embedded eSIM and a much-improved natural voice recognition system. Anything this monitor can't tell you will probably be covered off in the instrument binnacle. If you can stretch to the priciest FR Sport and Excellence Lux models, the usual analogue dials will be replaced by this smart 10-inch digital cockpit driver binnacle screen that lifts this Arona's interior into the digital age. Whatever your choice of trim, you'll find the seating position is fairly low slung by small crossover standards. In keeping with this Seat's sporty pretensions, but getting comfortable is easy thanks to a good range of adjustment from the seat and the smart three-spoke multifunction wheel. The seat offers decent under-thigh support but lacks the optional lumbar adjustment that's available on, say, a rival Ford Puma to minimise aches and pains on longer trips. All-round forward and rearward visibility is excellent, which will be just as well if you've opted for entry-level trim because rear parking sensors don't come as standard there. What else? Well, Seat says that all the controls and instruments have been set as high as possible, though that directive appears to have been ignored in terms of the lowly sightings of these ventilation dials in front of the gear stick. And build quality? Well, driven by exacting Volkswagen Group standards... That's always been a decent Seat strength. This car is screwed together in a way that should continue that showing. The switches and stalks feel reassuringly solid, which is why this model's Spanish Martorell production line was also chosen to assemble the second-generation version of Audi's considerably pricier A1 model. Moving to practicalities, well, there's most of what you'd expect. The door pockets and the glove box are both reasonably sized and the small storage area at the bottom of the centre stack gives you somewhere to stash your phone or your keys and includes twin USB ports and an aux in point. Twin cup holders and a coin tray sit alongside the thankfully conventional handbrake with a further cubby just behind. 
We like the little touches too, like the way that the air care filter in the ventilation system removes all allergens to create and maintain a clean air environment. Plus, your models can have big car features like micro suede seat trim, adjustable mood lighting and Seat's Kessie keyless entry and start system too. Let's take a seat in the rear. Now that taller shape we referenced earlier is obviously going to help with entry and exit here. And there's actually more roof height than you get with Seat's supposedly much larger Leon family hatch. And once inside, the benefits of the relatively lofty body continue to accrue. Offhand, we can't remember ever being in a small car with as much ceiling space as this Arona. Six foot adults who might normally grumble at the prospect of long distance rear seat confinement in any super mini base model need have no worries about the prospect of riding in this one. There'd better be only two of them, though. Most models in this class would struggle to accommodate three rear seated folk above school age. But in this one, that'd be even more difficult thanks to this particularly prominent high centre transmission tunnel, the kind of thing you'd think you wouldn't need in an exclusively front-driven car. You don't get any useful practicality tricks, the sliding seat base you'd have on a rival Renault Capture, for example, but then a lot of class contenders lack that. Most of these give rear passengers next to nowhere to store their odds and ends. The Arona's better in that regard thanks to the provision of properly sized door bins, which is just as well because rather meanly, Seat has decreed that most variants of this model must do without seat back pockets. This centre cubby will be useful though, and the socket just beyond it is near enough to allow back seat passengers to connect in media devices. Finally, let's take a look at luggage space out the back. Now, the rear hatch opens to reveal 400 litres of luggage space. That's 45 litres more than you get in an Ibiza, and enough to deliver this Arona a mid-class showing in this regard. There are certainly rivals that would offer more, Renault's Capture and Citroën's C3 Aircross, for example, but also plenty that would give you less, like Ford's EcoSport and Nissan's Duke. The dual height boot floor you have to pay extra for in most Ibiza models is standard here. And beneath the base of the cargo area, there's a large empty recess, though only because Seat declines to provide a standard spare wheel of any sort, something we always disapprove of in any vehicle purporting to be an SUV. The loading area itself offers a set of body coloured tie down points, two bag hooks and elasticated straps on either cargo sidewall. Need more room? Well, this car can't offer versatile options like a ski hatch, a rear bench you can push forward, or a fold-flat front passenger seat. Just the usual 60-40 split rear bench. Push the backrest forward and 823 litres of space is revealed. That's up to the top of the seat backs. There's 1,280 litres if you load to the window line. Arona prices start at around £21,000, but expect most variants to sell in the same kind of £23,000 to £25,000 bracket common to the two leading small SUVs, Nissan's Duke and Renault's Capture. Trim levels are based around the usual SE, SE Technology, FR, FR Sport, Experience and Experience Lux, Seat spec options. The Spanish brand knows that the extent to which buyers will be able to personalise the Arona and make it their own will be important. Colour-wise, the car's divided into two. The lower body on the one hand and the roof plus the A and C pillars on the other. The roof can be grey, black, orange or the same colour as the body. Globally, there are 68 possible colour combinations. As we said, equipment-wise, things kick off with SE trim. This features Eco LED automatic headlamps with LED daytime running lights, plus 17-inch dynamic design alloy wheels, metallic paint and body colour for the door handles and mirrors, along with LED technology for the daytime running lights, powered mirrors and a decent level of camera safety kit, which we'll cover off for you in a few moments. Inside with SE trim, leather features on the steering wheel, gear stick and the handbrake. And you get air conditioning, cruise control, a height adjustable driver's seat, an auto dimming rear view mirror, a trip computer, illuminated 
honey mustard coloured air vents around and a split folding rear bench. Infotainment's taken care of by an 8.25 inch central screen. And this offers wireless full link smartphone integration with Apple CarPlay or Android Auto functionality, plus Bluetooth audio streaming, a USB port and steering wheel mounted controls that allow you to operate the four speaker DAB audio system. In addition, all Aronas get use of this Spanish brand's clever, freely downloadable Seat Connect app. With remote access, a year's use of which comes with the car, this allows you to remotely lock or unlock your Arona from wherever you are. If you've forgotten where you've parked it, it'll give you area notification. And if having got that, you still can't find your car in a crowded car park, the Connect app will allow you to remotely activate either the alarm, the headlights or the horn. It'll also give you a vehicle health report, help you schedule servicing and give you various elements of extra driving data. Avoid entry level SE trim and across the rest of the range, the Seat Connect app also gives you map updates, traffic information, route calculation and a year subscription to the brand's infotainment system, which allows you to use online radio. Plus, in this form, the app can give you info on local parking spaces and fuel stations. Right, having covered everything you get with base SE trim, let's go on to look at the spec levels across the rest of the lineup. The first step further up the range comes with the SE technology grade, which basically is the same as SE, but with rear parking sensors and the larger 9.2 inch center dash screen. That screen update's important because it means you also get navigation with a 3D map display, plus voice control activated by the command hola, hola. Beyond SE technology trim, you've two directions you can go in. Sportiness, emphasised by the FR model, or luxury, epitomised by the top experience trim levels. In both cases, you get full LED headlamps, dark tinted rear windows, LED tail lights, power folding mirrors, rain sensing wipers and an alarm. Arona FR models get a slightly more dynamic look and feel thanks to smart 17-inch dynamic alloy wheels, twin exhaust pipes, a rear spoiler and sports styling for the rear bumper. Plus you get sports suspension and the Seat driver profile driving mode system. Inside with FR models, you get sports seats, a black headliner, illuminated red air vent surrounds and a flat bottom steering wheel which on DSG Auto models has gear shift paddles. You can go even further too with the FR Sport trim grade we have here, which adds micro suede upholstery, larger 18 inch performance Cosmo gray alloy wheels and Seat digital cockpit, a 10 inch screen which replaces the instrument binnacles, conventional analog dials. If you're prioritizing comfort, your dealer will steer you instead towards one of the Experience trim levels. Experience spec gets you 17 inch dynamic design alloy wheels, Kessie keyless entry, dual zone climate control, rear parking sensors, air vent surrounds that illuminate in a burgundy color, interior ambient lighting and power folding mirrors. If you want to go further, Experience Lux spec adds to this with 18 inch performance wheels, a park assist system, front parking sensors, micro suede upholstery, heated front seats, a rear view camera and that digital cockpit instrument binnacle screen we just mentioned. On to safety. Now all models get front assist, autonomous braking, one of those camera driven systems that at urban speed scans the road ahead as you drive in search of potential accident hazards. If one's detected, you'll be warned. And if you don't respond or aren't able to, the brakes will automatically be applied to decrease the severity of any resulting collision. In addition, there's lane assist, which alerts you if you drift over lane delineation markings, a tiredness recognition system that monitors your driving reactions for drowsiness. It'll recognize by prompting you to stop for a restorative coffee and a clever multi-collision braking system that automatically breaks the car down to six miles an hour after a collision. So if say someone hits you and understandably you go to pieces, your Arona will automatically sort itself out. 
There's all the passive stuff too, of course, twin front, side and curtain airbags, ISOFIX child seat fastenings, active anti-whiplash front head restraints, tyre pressure monitoring, hill hold control to stop you from drifting backwards at junctions, and the usual electronic systems for traction and stability control. Plus, there's an ABS braking system that flashes the brake lights to warn following motorists if you're making an emergency stop. If you want more in terms of safety, you can pay extra for the safety and driving pack, which is only available with the TSI engines. This gives you three key features. Adaptive cruise control, which automatically controls your distance to vehicles in front on the highway. High beam assist, which automatically dips your headlight beams for you at night. And dynamic road sign display, which pictures road signs as you pass and displays them on the dash. The headline engine is Seat's well-regarded 1.0-litre TSI petrol turbo unit, and it should certainly prove to be very frugal. Let's get to the WLTP figures. Expect the 95 PS 1.0-litre TSI version to manage up to 51.4 mpg on the combined cycle and 124 grams per kilometre of CO2. This 1.0-litre TSI 110 PS manual manages up to 53.3 mpg and 121 grams per kilometre. The 1.5 TSI Auto manages up to 45.6 mpg and 140 grams per kilometre. All models get an automatic stop and start system to cut the engine when you don't need it, stuck in traffic or waiting at the lights. What else? Well, there's Seat's usual three year or 60,000 mile warranty. That's unexceptional when rivals like Toyota and Hyundai offer five years of cover as standard and Kia offers up to seven years. However, the Seat deal is extendable, so you might be able to negotiate on that. And it includes two years of Europe-wide roadside assistance. Seat dealers also offer an it's fixed, low-cost servicing programme. To even out the cost of regular maintenance, you can take up fixed price servicing packages for up to three scheduled halts, and they go with the car when you sell it, if the balance has still to be used. The Arona, says Seat, is designed for drivers looking for a sense of excitement, distinction and functionality. People who know that age is just a number, not an outlook on life. In other words, the people who've been busily buying Nissan Dukes and Renault Captures in considerable numbers over the last five years. The Spanish maker wants in on this lucrative market and the improved version of this little crossover looks to have everything necessary to entitle them to a useful slice of sales in this segment. The potential for personalisation will be key to this car's prospects, as will the efficiency made possible by its efficient engines and light, stiff MQB A0 chassis. It took some time for the Iberian maker to bring us a crossover of this kind, but over 350,000 global sales since this model's original 2017 launch have shown that quite a market exists for it. This crossover's got plenty of life in it yet.